this shot sucks. <laughs> okay, people, welcome back to another edition of Figure of Fodder, where I go through the stacks of toys that I have that haven't been reviewed yet. I grab some random ones, and we're going to do this quick and dirty style. Hit some high points, hit some low points, and then go from there. I'll decide if it goes on the shelf or it goes in a pile or a bin or somewhere else. Today we have the Bluefin edition of the SH Figure Arts Ant-Man and the Wasp Ant-Man, and this is the one that comes with the big-ass ant. What's with that reflection of the light? The big-ass ant. And we have the Bandai American Dragon Star series Super Saiyan Blue or Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan KO Ken times 10 Goku. I just picked this up. I thought it looked interesting. I, I have a problem, okay? We have the Target exclusive Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Solo Moloch. There's the Bandai SH Figure Arts Harry Potter and the Sorcerer Stone Harry Potter. And then this Kyoto Revel Tech Takayashiki. I don't know what it is. It looked cool. I, I picked it up. I just like the design of it. I like the look. I. I yeah, like I said, I have a problem. But first up, let's take a look at Ant-Man and Ant. And getting it out of the package, I wasn't too super impressed with the first version of Ant-Man. I think it was the Civil War version from SH Figure Arts. It was just that figure, a couple of hands, I think, and then a tiny little Ant-Man. And even though this comes with a big-ass ant, I like the colors the details, everything is just amped up a little bit more with this release. Civil War was kind of dull in the metal department, dull in the red, kind of smooth on the grayish parts of the costume. On this one, the black is jet black, the reds are kind of candy color, the metals look metallic, it has a shiny factor to it. And I love the eye lenses here. You can't, at least I don't think you can see the eyes behind the lenses, but it has that kind of mystique to it. And then you have all the SH Figure Arts articulation that you're used to. I kind of worry about the shoulder pads popping off, but they do have an R and an L just in case that does happen. But nice crunch, arc, leg out, forward, knee comes most of the way up. I just feel like this is an actual upgrade to the other Ant-Man I already have. But then you also, holy shit, let's get all that in the picture. And then you have the ant itself. It's not the most articulated piece I've ever held. It's mostly just swivel joints everywhere. It, well, I think the neck may be a, no. It's mostly swivel, but you have swivels at the legs, the legs, the legs, and I'm okay with that because of, it's not heavy, but the weight of it, I think if there were ball joints where the legs attach to the body, it would sink, it would it would collapse under its own weight. But it does come with a stand just in case it, there is a little bit of sag to it or something. I'm not sure, I haven't had a problem with the legs giving out. But then the back end also twists a little bit. Other than that, it's a rotocast big ass ant. I did have to attach the antenna in, they were kind of hard to plug in. And then there's the wings. They look good, they're a clear plastic and they're a little bit flimsy that attach to a ball joint right there. You can turn them, but don't do it by the wings. Do it by the base of it. You can move it around. Not a huge amount, but you can bring the wings up and get them into different positions. Getting Scott onto the ant, though, the instructions kind of show to put the hand on the handle first and then plug the arm in. The hands are not soft at all. Truthfully, I haven't been able to get the hand on here without fear of breaking the handle off. May need to warm it up or something. Oh wait, did I do the right twist this time? I just cannot get it. Well, that hand's gone. <laughs> Where'd you go? Okay, there we go. I got it popped on. It took a little bit more force than I was comfortable with, but <laughs> what you can do. But that's the way they go. I only imagine it's harder it, with the whole figure attached trying to do that. And that does look good in the sense that you have to think of the action figure as a shrunk down version already than the ant. In a regular display, it'll look just kind of like he made the ant larger. It's a neat concept and believe me, this really adds to the value. The figure by itself, usually 60 bucks, if not a little bit more. The whole set is 100, but right now you can get it on Amazon for 80. That's a $20 ant. That's a hell of a lot of toy for that price. At this point right here, you might as well get on the Quinjet or something. Next up, Dragon Star's Goku, or Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 10 Goku. And this isn't bad if you're looking for a cheap alternative to figure arts. If you're just wanting some decent, I, maybe a little bit below decent articulation on a Dragon Ball Z character figure. And I think that Bandai America does a good job with this line of doing different alternate versions of characters. But in the long run, if you're looking for quality 
action figure? I don't think this is it. It looks like it's there, double joints around the figure. It, it, you think, oh, there's articulation, but the range, for whatever reason, is just really limited. Double elbow comes up a little past 90, but not as much as you think whenever you look at it right there. A little bit of articulation at the waist. The head, for being what it is, you would think he could look up, but he's stuck in that kind of forward position. The hips could be a lot better, especially being hidden under here. Where Why won't it go out? Double knee, oh, kind of ugly. Ball ankle, but again, not a lot of motion here. He is really difficult to stand straight up. You dick. But I love the color of the hair here. It may not be accurate, but it has a nice shiny blue metallic look to it. The skin tone isn't as red as promotional shots, and it doesn't quite match the chest. The chest is like normal Goku, and then there's a slight reddish tint to the head and arms. He's got the two fists, and then, god dang, that was a little bit harder than I thought it would be. And then he's got two open, flared out hands. For comparison, here he is with the SH figure art, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegeta, and the Bandai Figure Rise Super Saiyan Goku model kit. Kind of works with the SH figure arts line, definitely not working with the model kit line, which is my main line. But it almost looks like you could switch the heads. And it's a little bit smaller, but it looks pretty good. Face-wise, I, I give it that. And hair. Hair is pretty cool. Next up, let's take a look at... Oh, that was really hard. Look at the Star Wars Black Series Moloch. And oh, I wasn't expecting to like this as much as I do like it. And it's not because it's a Star Wars figure. It's because it's got some surprising points in it. And kind of because it's a Star Wars figure. Moloch didn't do a lot for me in the movie. But getting it in action figure form... I kind of like them more now than I did before. Nice sculpted detail to the different parts of this costume. I mean, it's essentially a, well, a slug, we'll look at that here in a second, in a big robe with a, some kind of weird-ass helmet on top. But the blue stands out really nicely on the eye right there against the skin tone and the other earth tones of the costume. They did a cool dry brush around here to bring out some of the sculpted detail of the jacket and then the under robe. The jacket, the robe, and then the under robe. I wish that had continued to these leather parts on the brown just to bring out the details there too because there's a lot of sculpted stuff here. Articulation inside this hood thing, there is some movement to the head. But because of the mask not coming away too far from the face, it's a little bit difficult to get in there and move it around. Hinge the swivel at the elbow or shoulder. Maybe it is an elbow. Maybe this is, is alien physiology. But at the actual elbow, comes up to about 90. Then it rotates. He does have up and down on the trigger finger hand. But the biggest thing for me is the torso joint right here at the belt. Look at the crunch on this damn thing. Shoop, shoop. Look at the tilt. That's insane. And it's mostly because of the shape of this character. There's no hip joint. There's no legs to get in the way. Don't want to go too far back because then you're pulling on this rubber piece right here that seems to not want to stretch with it. But then underneath the robe, you get this slug look to it. And no paint because it's hidden under this robe. But for some reason, they went with a soft, rubbery material for it. It feels very uh, sex toyish. And then a solid bottom piece capped off down there so it's easier to stand up in whatever poses you want to get them in. <sighs> for accessories, he comes with this kick-ass little pistol blaster. And it fits in his hand, but I figure most of the time it's going to go in this nifty holster here. Ba boom. He comes with a mask piece that can be a pain in the ass. This is kind of on a hinge. You bring it all the way down. You can see the little clippies right there. You pinch it in to put it into the side of the head. And then you bring the bottom up until it kind of... It doesn't snap but it, until it forms together. And then I guess that's driving mode or intimidation mode. I don't know. But the big thing I wanted to see was the staff. They made a big deal of this at San Diego Comic-Con as the end of the staff being all these tortured souls or bodies or anything. That just doesn't come across in plastic form. The hand's soft enough to open up with his mitten hands. He doesn't have fingers. Well, he has a trigger finger. What's on the other hand? Uh, yeah, mittens. But that's easy enough to just bam, stick in there. He's holding the staff. I like this. Especially next to Solo himself. It's bigger. It's a deluxe. It's it, kind of intimidating. It'll look great on the... Wait, 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 wait. Let's wait till the end. Next up, Harry Potter. Okay, I'll be honest here. I wasn't going to get the Harry Potter line from SH Figure Arts. I, I'd passed on this originally, but Bluefin was nice enough to send me a review sample along. But damn it, it's almost like, hey, take a hit off this, and uh, it, it's not addictive. Go ahead, just try it once. And now I feel like I need the rest. Ron and Hermione and Snape coming. Because this is just a nice action figure all the way around. You'd think with the robes and such it'd be hindered, and 
It's a little bit troublesome to get around the hanging down rows, but everything else, your standard figure arts fair. Look at the head tilt. Look at the head tilt. I did notice down in the legs, it took me a minute to realize the feet. If out of the package you have the feet shifted forward a little bit, you're not going to get any up action to it. And that will make it a pain in the ass to stand. He'll be back heavy. But you can take the ankle and shift back the foot getting the laces up under the pants leg and that gives you a little bit of up action and it makes him much easier to stand up much easier there you go yes it's smooth here yes the pants are smooth but the wrinkles it's, it's subtle it's done nicely up at the head it does throw me off a little bit with the glasses i can understand why they did this they didn't want separate glasses that could break or fall off or something they sculpted the glasses to the head and if you look at it really closely the frames actually conform to the face but the effect is okay once you get a little ways back it's just that once you see it you're gonna keep seeing it when you look at it. And that's the same for the alternate heads, which this is freaking me out. This is kind of crazy looking. But there's a gritted teeth head and then a less smiling head. Kind of a, you know, we're gonna figure this out, guys. But for me, Harry's the smiling kid, full of wonder. This is the first movie where he finds out about all this stuff. It's, it's a good look for him right here. Switched out, there is a seam in the hairline. It comes off and then you pull the face off. And because of the dark hair, the seam line isn't as noticeable as we've seen with some of the golden haired SH Figure Arts figures. Comes with Hedwig. There's actually a point of articulation right here at the neck, but you can also pop the ball joints out for the wings and open wings pop in. Those move around, you can bring them back, up, down, around. The instructions say to get a stand because there's a hole in the back right there, but I have been able to put it in precarious positions to get the owl to stay there. He comes with several sets of hands. He has the two open hands. He has an open grip, closed grip, and I'm looking for the wand gripping hand. Even with the sleeve, I haven't had a problem popping the hands on and off. And he holds his wand well. It's basic, it's simple, but it's supposed to be. He comes with a stack of books, which is kind of cool. I mean... <sighs> Yeah, they're plain, they have no writing on them, but the color separation between them, and they even painted the pages on the side, I, and it's good enough. And then the Nimbus 2000. It even says Nimbus 2000 up on the top. This has more paint down here in this part of the broom than I see in a lot of action figure hairdos. The foot pegs are on a pin. It moves back and forth. And then he comes with another robe with some action to it for when he is riding the Nimbus, and you just pull the arms out. There's also a pin in the back to kind of keep it centered because, oh, get up in there. With as many accessories as this figure comes with, I would have liked to have seen a stand for this to hover or for, well, they don't even give you one for Hedwig. So this whole sell the stand separate business for figure arts, eh? another nifty little thing, this back hair piece is actually separate. So it gets up and out of the way when you want him to look up when he is riding the broom. For scale comparison, here he is with the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Solo and the SH Figure Wars Infinity War Black Widow. Nice small figure, but in order to get that price point back up, they packed him with a bunch of accessories. Not complaining, I like accessories. This totally works. And then finally, here is this thing. And right off the bat, we're gonna do this, this box. Here we go, nice presentation and all that. You pull out the figure, and it's this. What happened? It gave the size whenever I ordered it and everything, but getting it out of the box right now, uh, that seems a little bit tiny. But it includes a stand. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for the size of it. I knew the size of it, but in pictures it looks more grand. It looks more imposing. Get it next to a standard six inch Marvel Legends figure and... Uh, it's a little, a little bit small. Also looking at the details, the sculpt is really, really nice. I dig it. It's flowing. There is a lot going on with this figure all over. And the paint is pretty good. I like the patina to the gold parts. It's got that green inside the gold. And that's punched in nicely all over the figure where that is. My problem is with the base paint. Or maybe it's the color of the plastic or something. It just didn't seem to come out as nice as it did on the promotional images. There you get kind of a like beat up wood look or maybe some stone with some chips in it there's some white on top of a nice brown the eyes right here they're white with some black around them and then it kind of all blends together here there's almost a fade to the eyes just like the, the white was just thrown at the figure the base color is really dull there is some shade and some shadow but the overall piece the gold sticks out against the colors of the body itself and then of course with this being Kyoto with revel tech joints oh it's all over the place almost 
too much. Hell, even the wheel thing on the back has a double Revel Tech joint right there where you can put it here, you can come up with it or around. Each arm has a Revel Tech joint at the elbow and at the shoulder, so you can get up and out and around and about. A couple of Revel Tech joints in the torso. But when you get to the legs, there's this robe piece coming down. There's this robe piece hanging off the back on a Revel Tech joint up in there. These are on Revel Tech joints right here. And what looks like pants are actually front covers. There's nothing to the back of them. So the leg has Revel Tech joints up at the hip and then at the knee and down at the ankle. All that together, it's like messing with an amazing Yamaguchi Batman cape attached to an amazing Yamaguchi Magneto cape. It's just too much i feel like at least for me i know that it's all dynamic and you gotta you think about it and get in there and pose it and stuff but the few minutes i've been messing with this to get poses or even to get it to stand up it's a little bit it can be a little bit frustrating thankfully besides this usual standard stand with the hook and the bottom to it and stuff it comes with this ornate stand that looks like part of the figure. It's got two foot pegs. It's got the patina to the gold. It's got a stone look down here. And putting it on... Oh, that one's kind of... Oh, are you kidding me? These are on Revel Tech joints too. I didn't even realize that. I thought I was about to break that off, but no. Nope. But putting it on there alleviates some of the stress of trying to keep him upright while doing some of these poses. I say as he won't get the hell straight up. And then you'll notice all the hands are in grip poses of some kind. That's because he comes with a fair amount of stuff in gold. I thought this was a chalice, but it's some kind of hook weapon, some kind of bladed weapon. Sorry, wrong, it came apart. That's actually a bow type weapon of some kind. Because here's the arrow that goes with the bow. Another claw type weapon, except claws on both ends. Some kind of wheel throwing something and then a sword i think i like this best because it seems the most traditional when it comes to weapons okay after actually looking at the instructions like a sensible adult i realized the weapons come apart like the bow did a minute ago to slip into the closed hands the arrow is really tied in that hand though and this thing the instructions show to put into this hand that has kind of a open forefinger, but mine doesn't. It's another grip hand, so I don't know if I got the wrong hand with this figure or what, but I can't use this. Also, it's gotten a lot easier as I've messed with it using the Revel Tech joints down here in the stand. I kind of angled them forward, that way it's better. <laughs> Essentially, I'm posing the figure using the stand joints because otherwise it doesn't like to stand straight up and down, which is a problem I have with Revel Techs anyway. So it's kind of cool now that it's standing on the stand, but I really do not want to mess with it. So at the end of the day, I had some good showings here, some not so great showings. Now that I have the Kyoto, whatever the hell this figure is, in a pose that looks semi-decent and on the stand, it's not going to fall over and stuff. I like it, but it's not going in the main display. This may go on coffee table or in the kitchen somewhere or something. SH Figure Arts Harry Potter, I guess I need to find room for a Harry Potter display because this is so damn amazing, I want the rest of the set now. But as soon as I get into it, I know they'll just be like, here's Snape, here's maybe Voldemort, maybe Draco, and then they'll forget about the line or something. I, I don't know. Moloch. I got a Star Wars display. You know half my room is Star Wars. Moloch is a nice addition to that. Dragon Star Super Saiyan Blue KO Ken times 10 Goku. Uh, I don't know. I kind of regret picking this up now. It's okay if you're not hardcore. You just want a display of Gokus or some of the characters from Dragon Ball. But if Dragon Ball is your passion, go with the figure arts or go with the model kits. Something. Uh, Dragon Stars. Meh. And then I didn't think I'd like the Ant-Man or the Ant, but it's a nice little set and it's a hell of a value for what it is. I love the colors on it. I love the sculpt. It just looks great overall. It's going to replace the SH Figure Arts Ant-Man in my display. As for the ant, it'll go somewhere, I guess. I'll hang it up or... <laughs> I like it, but my display wasn't meant for big-ass creatures on over on the Avengers side anyway. Kind of figure. 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 Fodder. Figure. Something. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.